Luckily, the car itself can't hold itself up as high, so you need... Oh, we have a crash there. It's one of the... Looks like Ed Carpenter, maybe. Yeah, that is it. That is it, Carpenter, the 20. Yeah, right off of turn number three, and that is a heavy, heavy hit to the outside uh, of turn number three. Outside left front looks like he must have lost the car, spun it around, and that side came back in to collect the wall. Good news for Ed uh, and fans of Ed Carpenter. Uh, those of you not watching is simply listening. Uh, he's already disconnecting everything, and uh, he's popped the steering oh, yeah, wheel off. early down the race car. Zach, you're watching it as it happened. Yeah, just uh, close three quarters of the way through turn three, and he just lost the rear and you know, completely did a 180 as he was calling through the exit of the corner, and the left side of that race car just lined up perfectly with the uh, the retaining wall right as it starts straighten up for the straightaway so looked like a pretty hard hit for him you know racetrack looks like he's got some front end damage to that uh, boy scouts of america honda for dale coin racing that's actually out of the tunnel turn that uh, that car steps out zach and yeah. he does not not very heavy contact but that's an odd spot to see drivers get sideways over the last couple years here at Pocono. i mean to be honest as long as it didn't get uh, they qualify again. Whoa! Hits. Oh, oh two a big hits hard. Hit so lucky to miss the attenuator on the second impact. That was a big hit on the outside wall. We haven't. I don't see his head moving around yet. But that was a okay, really Ryan. hard hit. Two oh, hits. Uh oh. Uh, he's taking the steering wheel out, but he said his hip is a concern right now. He hit hard on the outside wall and very hard on the inside. Let's watch. Oh, ooh, ooh, oh. Just like Ed Carpenter's crash, but probably twice the force. And the same a... side, both times. You see the wheel still stayed to the car. It's got a tether attached to it, so it doesn't go flying down the road. Look, he matched Ed Carpenter's marks perfectly. Lost at the exact same point, but this was on a qualifying run where the corner speed is up. And when it lets go like that, this is not going to be fun. Oof. That was a f straight, flat pancake against the wall. Now watch this as he rotates back around. At this point, he'll be looking at the start of the pit wall, just hoping that the car does not impact that head on. No, I won't. But we appreciate it. But I, it's been a good month for you so far. No, it has been. And, you know, Whoa. this is the kind of place that, that obviously TK oh, likes. Sorry, we had a crash. Yeah, Robin, a big one for Elio Castroneves. Got turned around, made contact with the rear, and then the front nose as well. Once again, Pocono Raceway yeah, yeah. bites. That was, yeah, a hard, okay. that was a hard, hard crash. And that is very uncharacteristic characteristic of Helio, so not very often you see him crash, and the front nose is completely tore off of that car. Very lucky. Importantly, though, you heard Nobody's him say here, he's okay. Yeah, didn't expect that much. So all of a sudden, to the bottom as he went in, and then it just got loose, and that he was a it. hard hit. He ha he kind of rode it out for a good two, three hundred feet, and then it just kept going, going, going. And and really, what you don't want is for it to hook back like Bourdais at Indianapolis. So. Oh, that's the worst noise in this sport, that thundering blow. Luckily for the safer bear. Let's go back again to see what happened to Sebastian Saavedra. Very similar to his teammate, James Hinchcliffe, gets high into the gray and pretty heavy impact. Saved it once, and then it hooked back into the wall, and the right rear walloped as we get another angle on board. Same deal as Hinchcliffe. Yeah, he just got high. Car coming out of the pits. Munoz coming out of the pits he got in high got into gray and the front end was gone so what happens here Hinchcliffe on the inside down low on Hildebrand kind of just a racing deal one guy was coming down the other guy was coming up just a little bit they barely touched and yeah both of them in the wall Hinchcliffe square on the back attenuator Hinchcliffe had a little bit of space to the yellow line but probably didn't want to get too close to the apron meanwhile Hildebrand doesn't really want to run too high because as we've seen already, if you get up in that gray, you won't finish the corner. So let's walk on, watch on board with Hinch here. Oh, hard hit. 
That was just one, really one of those racing deals. It was a pretty late attempt by Hinchcliffe to kind of put it in there that late. He was only at his back wheel, and, you know. Yeah. Hildebrand was going for the line. You don't want to get too high and get in the gray, and Hinchcliffe was kind of just stuffed.